Hey guys, welcome back. I am making a huge series of very short, casual videos to, you know, give you something as a jumping off point or to inspire you or just show you what is going on in my studio. The past year, I've done mostly longer videos that were a little bit more of a lesson. Um, just so you know, those take a very long time to edit. Every hour of footage is, you know, about two to three hours of editing on average. So it can take a long time. And it's kept me also from sharing other things with you that might be helpful that would fit into a more like a short, casual video. So that's what we're gonna do. And today I have a mini art haul for us. Um, I got some acrylic inks. And so I'm gonna talk about them and swatch them and see what colors we can get. So what I bought was a bunch of these um, Liquitex acrylic inks. And I don't think I'm gonna take these out sketching plein air, um, cause I just don't like taking liquidy stuff with me just cause of the risk of spilling. But I wanted something else to use in the studio. Um, I tend to get bored very quickly and need a lot of variety to stay stimulated in my art practice. And so having something like this I can switch to as a different starting point, I think is gonna be really helpful for me. So the colors that I have are, this is Pearl Red. This is Burnt Sienna and it's a transparent. So some of these are transparent and some of these are a little more opaque. This is Yellow Orange Azo. This is Yellow Oxide and this is more opaque um, than some of the others. This is Thalo Blue and this is a transparent raw umber. And then I have a white to make things lighter. Um, I don't always like to use black, although it's good for mixing greens. So I got the raw umber instead of that. And let's just start off making maybe some reds and oranges. Let's see what we get. And I'm not cleaning my brush. I just want to kind of get right in there and keep it moving. See what we can get. And so with these Liquitex inks, I prefer them to the golden inks because they have less of a plasticky look when they dry. And I know um, a lot of artists love golden. They're really pigmented and they are nice, but yeah, they just look really, really plasticky. Um, when they dry and I just don't like the look of them. And even when you do them kind of thin in a wash, they still have this plasticky feel to them. Let's try adding some phthalo. Let's see where this goes. It's a really nice dark green. I really like that. Just some really nice earth tones for landscape colors. Thalo blue is really strong. It doesn't take much to turn a color with it. Let's see if we can lighten this up a little.
I bought the white not just to lighten stuff, um, which is helpful so that you can get a range of values, but it adds opacity um, really nicely to the colors. And so they end up looking a little bit more like gouache. This is like a really rich, deep turquoise. yellow got really muddy. I'm gonna just go ahead and swatch them. Really love the greens you can get um, with yellow and a neutral like a raw umber or a black. So I'll put some fresh yellow in there in a minute but I just want to see what I can get um, with what's there rather than waste it. This is like an azo green right there. It's a really nice color. That, I bet, is a nice gray. So mixing that red with this muddy neutralized blue in here, so this is like that deep turquoise color and that red is a complement. And it's giving me a nice warm gray. This pearl red is really strong, similar to phthalo blue, if you've ever used that. It takes a lot to shift it. This is a nice trio of colors right here. What else can we make? Let's try mixing the red, some raw umber. So the store, um, the only art supply store I have around here that's local is Michael's, and they didn't have any ultramarine blue um, ink, which was a bummer, but that's okay. So I think I'm gonna clean that up so that we can put some fresh yellow in there. Hopefully I don't spill the rest of these. Um, these are just really fun to have. They're almost similar to just having, you know, like watercolors or something that you can just go ahead and mix and get going with. Um, one of the things to note, acrylic inks dry 
permanent. They're not like watercolor where you can reactivate them. So if you put them in a dish or something like this, just make sure you clean it up um, pretty quickly after you use it. Otherwise it's gonna get caked on there. And oh, put this in here. These have these cool little droppers on them which I also prefer to golden. Um, if you've seen their inks, they've got these bottles with a twist top and those are kind of cool because you can sit there and keep squeezing it and writing with them if you wanted to, but they just, they have a tendency to get the paint dried on to the top and then you're trying to pick the paint off and the whole thing and it's, it gets kind of annoying. This is really nice. And I'm noticing this yellow is very strong too. It is an azo and azos tend to be strong. Um, so a little can go a long way with that, which is nice. side in here. Yellow oxide, um, like some of the earth tones, they're really beautiful, um, even on their own. They just have this nice, rich color to them. And the fun thing about using a color that's already neutralized, like the burnt sienna, the raw umber, and the yellow oxide, is when you mix them with a saturated color, it's going to bring it more towards an earth tone automatically because it is an earth tone. Um, so if you're looking for like quick ways to have landscape colors, having a few earth tone staples in your inks or your paints or whatever is really, really helpful. So I really like these um, and that's it for today. I just wanted to show you I got these um, and how I'm going to use them and I just wanted to show you the range of colors you can get with just a handful of these. You don't need to go crazy if this is something you want to try. You really could. If you wanted to just get a few, I would get um, either a black or a raw umber and a white and you could really just do like their mid-tone yellow and a magenta and an ultramarine blue and you can really make all the other colors from those three colors because they're basically like the printer colors um yeah so i'm really happy with these and they seem to all be drying matte which makes me very very happy um pencil will go over matte things and crayon will go over matte things. And again, that's the other problem with the golden. If you like acrylic inks, these are a little bit different than those. So if you've tried the golden ones and you weren't happy with them because you can't get other product over the top of them, um, you can use them really thin and water them down. So they are usable, but I just feel like these are so much easier as they are and they play um, much more nicely with the other 
supplies. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.